In the wake of the terrorist attacks that took place in New York and Washington, D.C. over a decade ago, U.S. government leaders scrambled to obtain information that would stop future attacks. Unfortunately, rather than taking the advice of experienced interrogators who knew how to obtain reliable information in humane ways, they decided to take the gloves off by ordering the use of torture. Since torture is illegal, they used euphemisms like enhanced interrogation techniques to hide what they were really doing. These so-called enhanced interrogation techniques included things like waterboarding and placement in confinement boxes. These are forms of torture and they are illegal. Popular culture has made torture seem like a common and acceptable practice. Television programs like 24 make torture seem normal, and movies like Zero Dark Thirty falsely make it appear that torture led directly to bin Laden's capture. The fact is, torture is not a normal, moral, or legal behavior, and it is counterproductive. Two recent investigations promised to shine a light on this horrific history of torture. After a three-year investigation, the Senate Intelligence Committee produced a 6,000-page long comprehensive report. The report describes acts of torture that are more shocking than those we already know about and details how torture was authorized. Further, it shows that the long-term consequences of torture were negative for U.S. national security. The second investigation is a bipartisan, privately funded review carried out by the Constitution Project's Task Force on Detainee Treatment. This bipartisan task force included some of the most respected names in government, law, ethics, and security. It investigated U.S. interrogation practices since 9-11. Why is this report important? It's important because we as a nation have to get this right. There are some key questions we wanted to address this morning. One, did the treatment of suspected terrorists in U.S. custody rise the level of torture? Secondly, if so, how did this happen? And then what can we learn from this to make better decisions in the future? Among the task force panelists were people like co-chair Asa Hutchinson, a former Republican congressman who served as a top official in the Department of Homeland Security under President Bush. Ambassador Thomas Pickering, one of our most decorated diplomats, and Reverend David Gushy, a respected professor of Christian ethics at Mercer University. Our bipartisan uh, group was able to conclude that, sadly, but um, unmistakably, the United States tortured people. Um, this was not a foreordained conclusion. I'm confident that there were people in the panel who went into the process um, convinced that it was otherwise, or hoping that it was otherwise. The task force's findings were unequivocal. No doubt it was torture. You cannot read that report without quickly coming to the conclusion that the United States was involved torturing people. This bipartisan task force unanimously concluded that the United States used torture. But why is torture a moral and religious issue? Why should people of faith care about this report issued by the Constitution Project? Christians oppose torture because we believe every person is created in the image and likeness of God. Because of that fact, we have to respect the dignity of each and every human being and torture in a very violent way violates that dignity. And for that reason, we oppose it in every case. It violates the dignity of the person being tortured. That's obvious. It also violates the dignity of the perpetrator of torture. And finally, it really does damage to the human dignity of all the people in a society that would tolerate torture in its name. It's simply fundamentally incompatible with the dignity of the human person and with Christian belief. The Jewish objection to torture is multiply determined. We have texts that teach us that another person's dignity should be as dear to us as our very own 
There are texts that warn us against excessively harsh treatment, even to those who are guilty, lest their humanity be degraded in our eyes. And then, of course, there's the fact that in Jewish court, self-incriminating confessions are inadmissible, which suggests an age-old and strong distaste for aggressive fishing expeditions that could lead to violence in the effort to get a confession. But I think the most salient and profound reason for our objections come from the most basic place in Jewish thought, which is we believe that every human being was made in the image of God and therefore God is implicated in our human relationships. So there's a clear saying of the prophet Lato, uh, don't torture living beings. You can imagine that from early childhood we are taught sayings of the prophet and the text of the Quran and repeatedly we are told as children not to torture small birds or not to burn even ants. So that's the kind of uh, religious approach we have towards living beings and how we are prohibited from the very beginning. So then the second thing is that Quran tells us that God has invested human beings with dignity. Torture robs both the perpetrators of torture and the victims of the torture of that dignity. So what were the findings of this landmark report? The panel unanimously agreed, without question or qualification, that the United States tortured people. I have read in the past about other countries doing this. Countries that we called fascist, countries that we thought violated every rule in the book, but that is not America. And to find out that we've actually learned from what these other despicable countries, or regimes, I should say, were doing, um, was very shocking to me. The panel also found that responsibility for torture went to the highest level of government. Uh, it was the first time, I believe, that uh, the President of the United States and his top advisors actually talked about torture and decided uh, specific types of torture or specific types of treatment, which amounted to torture, in the White House. Uh, so I think there was, there was uh, uh, and then there were memos uh, from uh, different uh, advisors to the President that uh, clearly uh, showed that the President knew of these discussions, knew the kinds of things that were being talked about and administered. So I think it, it does go to the top. Congress has essentially abdicated its role of providing a check on the executive branch. So uh, the balance uh, needs to shift back to greater transparency, greater oversight, greater accountability, and the actual capacity of some branch of the federal government to tell the executive branch no. How can people of faith work together to ensure that torture never happens again? Many Christians work very hard on the issue of torture because as a, as a church we have some experience of the issue of torture. There have been martyrs throughout the centuries that have experienced torture. Our own Lord and Savior was tortured on the cross. And so torture is an important issue for Christians. Every time we shame, humiliate, harm, or violate a human being, we shame, humiliate, and harm, and violate God. So for us, torture is unambiguously immoral. The tragedy is that in many Muslim countries, torture is used by the, by the tyrants, by the dictators to maintain their grip over their people. But for American Muslims, it becomes even more awkward, more painful that these wholesale perpetrators of torture in the Muslim world were used by the U.S. To, to, to perpetrate torture on some of the, the, the prisoners who were sent from here to those countries. I think that people of faith need to continue, however unpopular it may seem, to say, we did torture, it was wrong, we must never do it again, um, to keep the issue in 
in the public conversation and among their friends and at churches. Um, to love their country enough to, to blow the whistle when it's time to blow the whistle and say, we can do better than this. Um, to love God enough to say that um, we will be faithful to a God who loves people and who cares about human dignity, in fact, who is the author of human dignity, um, even uh, when our national security is at stake. The voice of the religious community needs to continue to be heard. Go to nrcat.org to find ways that you can be involved in ensuring that torture never happens again. Join the National Religious Campaign Against Torture in our work to grow the number of people who believe that torture is always wrong, without exception, in order to end torture forever. Share this film with your congregation, friends, and family. Let's work together to end torture forever.